So look at that beautiful light. Won't last too long right now <laughs> as that cloud is coming in. The prediction was no rain, just cloud, but it's beginning to drizzle. And at the same time, we have that incredible light over there. So I went to get my umbrella. So we can be outside and at the same time be in the dry. The lake height hasn't been adjusted on the official report since about Wednesday or Tuesday. Wednesday, I think, and it's, uh, it was 81 centimeters below, but it was rising every day between one to two centimeters, so Thursday, Friday. So it should be under, well under 80 centimeters now below the maximum. So 70 something, hopefully. You can see it over there rising at the wall or here also. Last night we had another concert in part of the Galilee Choir Festival that we were hosting yesterday. I put up something on Instagram and also on here on Facebook. And I did the German live stream yesterday evening on YouTube with a couple of shots from one of the choirs. So you can get a little bit of the taste of the music. The concert last night was very high quality, an extraordinary uh, use of voices. It was more the voices rather than the instruments. It was a cello and the keyboard. So it was very nice. I also put up a link for you in this post now of an article that came out from the Christian Media Center on the Women's Day last weekend. It's nice to see all this life and it's being celebrated. Yesterday there was a guide here and he said, can you do this for me now? And I said, it's been a very busy day. And he turned around to the visitors and he said, that's one word we didn't hear for two years. It's been a very busy day because we didn't have pilgrims. So now we have, thanks be to God, lots and lots of pilgrims coming. Impressively, there was a group of Lutherans from Northern Germany yesterday with the head of pilgrimage from northern Germany. We had a nice chat and from many other places. So you can see it's still wintry weather here. I even washed my clothes this morning thinking that it was going to be dry all day so I have to find a, a little windy spot, an airy spot so they can dry. And the waters are washing the shore like to do in the oceans every day, twice a day. It's beautiful when shorelines are clean, isn't it? No plastic, in good shape. Here we can see the light fighting with the darkness, which happens a lot in our souls. And the readings today in that sense are very, are very um, poignant. I have to share with you, uh, <laughs> the way it's put, it's a little amusing, but it's a very serious issue. A line that the bishop of my home diocese used yesterday in his daily Linton, Linton uh, piece, uh, Bishop Fenton Monaghan. And he said, 
Paddy Murphy. You know, Paddy Murphy. Paddy is the mo probably the most common Irish name, Patrick. So we're going to be celebrating St. Patrick's this coming week. And Paddy is, uh, is the affectionate way of saying Patrick. Paddy, or Pat. Paddy Murphy. And Murphy is the most common Irish name it used to be, but now Kelly's have overtaken that. Isn't that amazing? And so he said, Paddy Murphy went to Mass. He did it every Sunday, but Paddy Murphy went to hell. <laughs> That's a tough one. For what he did on Monday. You want me to repeat that for you? Paddy Murphy went to Mass. He did it every Sunday, but Paddy Murphy went to hell <laughs> for what he did on Monday because our life has to be connected, you know? Our life has, is one. We can't be living two compartments. And today's gospel passage is actually one of probably one of the hardest tests for us. And I imagine most of us have a little bit of homework if we want to be Jesus' disciples, really, and not just in name, not just a member of the club, but that we're really doing it, that we're really learning from Jesus. That means being a disciple, right? To learn from somebody is to be a disciple. And this was already in the teaching of Deuteronomy, like we see today. If you are in the covenant with the Lord, you're keeping his commandments, and his commandments are the truth of our lives. It's for our good, so it's in our own interest to keep the commandments. And then we're in the covenant with the Lord. We can't flout his commandments and expect, expect the blessings of covenant. God will always be merciful. He will always want to to reconcile with us, to reconcile us to himself. But there's that part, part is for us to do. And when it comes to commandments, wow. You say, okay, Jesus made it very simple. He said, love your neighbor as yourself, you know. Love God above everything, love your neighbor as yourself. But actually, that sounds very nice because love sounds very nice, right? But love can be very tough. And today is one of the biggest litmus tests if we really love in the text of the gospel. Pray for your enemies. That means pray for God's blessings, that the rain will come on their fields and that they'll be green like the hills of Ireland or like Mount Arbel right now. Pray for blessings on your enemies. And our enemies aren't just somebody that's leading a war against friends of ours or things like that. Our enemies are the people who hurt me personally. Little things inside the family. And it can be very rough can be very tense, can be very hard. People might have engaged in very serious relationships, maybe even marriage, and it went very sour. And how to harbor only love in our hearts for every person. Because enemies aren't just the human traffickers who basically imprison in different ways their victims and sell them and abuse them and use them. So, to, to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, to do good to those who do harm to us, <laughs> it's very easily said, or relatively easily said, but it's very, very, very tough sometimes. And Jesus makes that the condition of being his disciples. So it's not just being a member of the club. It's pretty serious stuff. And that's the battle of the light and the darkness in our souls, like we see right there in the, in the, on the uh, screen right now, or those who are here and see it in the clouds we have right in front of us. It's even hard to continue loving somebody who just ignores us, who ignores our love, who doesn't give us credit for it, who doesn't reciprocate, because love in a certain sense is frustrated when it's not reciprocated, because love is mutual by nature. 
personal love is mutual. And <clears throat> sometimes if the mutuality is missing, the, oh, look at this light. If the mutuality is missing, then there's a great frustration. And to continue loving that person, oh, wow, that's missing.